So I'm gonna, I need to start this video off a little bit different today because I know I have a Lebanese audience, people from Lebanon who watch me and I, what happened today is very sad, very, very sad. My condolences to you, your country, uh, your friends and family that may have been involved in this. I appreciate your support and I'm gonna let you guys know right now, I am thinking of you guys. Um, Absolutely insane. It's insane. Insane. Uh, I I personally don't think this was just a firework explosion. This is my two cents. Um, but let's let's hope for the best out of this, and let's hope for the best of, out of the uh, out of the people who've been affected by this. All right. So let's get back on track with cryptocurrency. Listen, today we are going to talk about the top thirty performers of July. This is important. You need to make sure you have this information so that you know what to do in the month of August. Okay. So. Top, uh, top privacy coins, top centralized exchange uh, coins, and top DeFi coins. I'll also share with you your top DeFi platforms based off of liquidity, what was locked in. This will help you make a decision in August because you don't want to get caught catching falling knives. Um, also today, we need to talk about what Goldman Sachs has said about the US dollar. Basically, what they have said is, is can be translated into saying Goldman Sachs is saying Bitcoin's about to blow up. It's about to take over. U.S. dollar is being irresponsible with the kind of inflation that it's experiencing and putting in place right now. Uh, it's, this, is, this is a segment you don't want to miss. This is a pretty damn big deal. Now, do not forget to smash that subscribe button. We all know how YouTube hates this kind of content, okay? They don't support cryptocurrency. They don't, they don't support the decentralized lifestyle. We saw what they did to Altcoin Daily and many other channels. Thank God Altcoin Daily got his channel back. But smash subscribe, hit like, comment, okay? Again, this will help us all out. If you like cryptocurrencies, you want this kind of content, smash subscribe, hit like, share the video, comment. All right, guys? So if you actually pay attention to what's happening in your own country, in your own economy, one of the worst things and the, and the last thing you want to hear about your country and its currency is inflation. You don't you don't want the idea that your current that your country is going to face that because then you start thinking of things like uh, Venezuela. It didn't work out well for them. That's not something that any country or anybody wants their country to experience. Right now, though, I don't think the U.S. is unique to this situation right now because of the way the illness, the thing that's spreading around the world right now, has impacted business. It's impacted trade. Has impacted everybody. Unemployment right now in the U.S. is at 11%. We haven't seen 11% unemployment since the 1940s. Okay, 1940s. It's been a long time since we've been in this kind of bad shape. But, you know, we're in bad shape, right? And the Fed is preparing to effectively abandon its strategy of preemptively lifting interest rates to head off higher inflation, according to a report in the Wall Street Journal. Let me repeat that again. The Fed is preparing to effectively abandon its strategy of preemptively lifting interest rates to head off higher inflation. I, I, now, okay, I, I don't, I don't know what they're thinking right now. Let, let's be honest about this. I mean, we we have the crystal ball, right? We we we've seen how this kind of irresponsibility has impacted other economies, and and what are we going to do? We're, we're not going to hit it off. We're, we're not going to take the proper action. We're, we're going to act with some level of arrogance. This is very scary stuff. Now, if you were in Bitcoin, though, okay, so I don't have to break this down. I'm not going to break this down in detail. But if you are in Bitcoin, this is music to your ears. You see, Bitcoin prices have already soared 58% this year, beating silver's 36% and gold's 30%. Not to mention a 2% gain in the Standard & Poor's 500 index of large stocks. That's insane. And you see this irresponsible behavior by our Fed, by our economy, by those who dictate what happens with our economy is starting to catch up. And many people are taking notice. Take, for instance, Goldman Sachs warns the dollar's grip on the global markets might be over. Can you imagine a scenario, okay? And you got to really think about this practically and not emotionally, okay? I, I, the first thing I want to do is run to the idea of Bitcoin and the philosophies of Bitcoin, okay? But you got to think about this very practically for a second. If Bitcoin loses, if the US dollar, sorry, loses that benchmark as that benchmark currency and is no longer the currency that everything that's traded around the world is pegged to, do you honestly have to think about this, okay? Not emotionally. Think about the value of what the dollar is today. Okay, do you really think 
that the that Bitcoin would be worth twenty thousand U.S. dollars or fifty thousand U.S. dollars, if there was a scenario to where the U.S. dollar lost that status, and that kind of inflation hit, the domino effect will go worldwide. One Bitcoin will always be worth one Bitcoin. Don't forget that. But one Bitcoin may not be worth a hundred thousand or a million dollars. Might not even be worth ten thousand dollars any longer, due to the weakening strength of the one thing we keep pegging it to, to the one thing we keep trying to extract more of, U.S. dollar. And this is where Goldman Sachs says it. Goldman Sachs Group Incorporated put a spotlight in the sudden growing concern over inflation in the U.S. by issuing a bold warning Tuesday that the U.S. dollar is in danger of losing its status as the world's reserve currency. Goldman strategists cautioned the U.S. policy is triggering currency debasement fears that could end the dollar's reign as the dominant force in the global foreign exchange markets. This is a very big deal, guys. I mean, now let's move off of Bitcoin and talk about Ethereum. Ethereum 2.0 testnet Medalla goes live with 20,000 validators. It's We are getting closer and closer and closer to Ethereum 2.0. I actually think Ethereum 2.0 will slip in and go live uh, like a pleasant surprise kind of thing. Like we're going to say, oh, they're going to might say, oh, it's going to happen later 2021. It might happen early 2021. They might say, hey, it's going to happen early 2021 and happen at the end of 2020. I, I, they're, they're aggressively developing and, de and uh, aggressively innovating this. So, I mean, and the things are happening quickly. And, they're, and what's really exciting about this to me is anytime they do find a flaw, they're quick to address it and they're quick to acknowledge it and talk about it. And they get a lot of input from other developers. I mean, they are really fine tuning this thing. At first, I was very against Ethereum 2.0. I will not lie because I'm an old fashioned crypto guy. OK, proof of work. But as time goes on, proof of stake makes a lot of sense, especially for an ecosystem like Ethereum, where so much is built on top of it. You, you get what I'm saying? That's one of the deficiencies of Bitcoin, by the way, is we can't really add to it. And we're not using Bitcoin as a currency. And almost every law on the international book says, hey, you can't use Bitcoin to buy goods and services. <laughs> you get up saying so, I mean, it's uh, it, it's a real f fine, fine situation. But I'm very excited about this, Madala. And this is something that if you haven't followed, I think Ethereum 2.0, by the way, you need to follow it. And here's something else to really think about, OK? When you go and you look at what is happening in the markets, if you look at what's actually growing right now, you have to look at DeFi. Anything that is DeFi related right now, okay, is killing it. It's growing. And DeFi is something that doesn't need retail, mind you. Okay, it's that one thing they try to keep retail money out of because they don't need your money. But DeFi is growing like a, uh, it's like a, like crabgrass in the garden. It's just taking over. And the money that it's making is insane. That being said, in my opinion, it'd be foolish for me not to own more Ethereum. Like, seriously, that's something I think everybody needs to really think about is do I own enough Ethereum? Am I positioned? good enough in Ethereum knowing that everything is being innovated on right now and Ethereum has not slowed down and it's growing fast. I mean, anything on Ethereum, especially DeFi, is growing fast, okay? So just food for thought, not not financial advice, but just, just on the level here, guys. Think about this. All right, as promised, we are going to cover, let me get my big fat head out the way, the top performers of July, okay? So July performance of centralized exchange tokens. Bitmax, 35%, BNB, 34%, CRO, 32 FTT, 18 OKB, 16 The rest of these guys I'm not going to talk about because I just don't see them as meaningful exchanges. But what I see when I look at this is Bitmax is aggressively growing. Bitmax, actually, we're going to talk about them here in just a little bit because they have a new project or an IEO coming out on them that's a pretty big deal that people are talking about. But I'm definitely going to keep my eyes on Bitmax because I know there's more more projects that are coming out. I know they're getting more aggressive with the IEOs. Uh, BNB is a given. I mean, to see that BNB has been outperformed by Bitmax and b is being caught up to by uh, CRO, Crypto.com, I'm going to tell you 
uh, it's like, you know, no, there's no crypto empire that stands forever. Okay. I'm just saying that right now by Bi Binance, the BNB token heavily used BNB is constantly innovating. Uh, the, the Binance guys are always innovating. They're always growing. They're always doing new things. They see some, something trending. They go ahead and adapt and, and adopt. Okay. They're like hostile takeovers. But I don't know. Um, for me, uh, it's not because I uh, that crypto.com supports me. It's just because I know that crypto.com is so aggressive and the community that follows them is very passionate and likes them. It's like a friendlier ecosystem. CRO is definitely growing. FTT in this bull market, I think it's going to grow well too because a lot of your institutional traders go on there. So definitely keep your eyes on that. But I do think that uh, shocking to see a flippening where BNB has has not taken the, the, the throne as far as uh, centralized exchange tokens. Privacy coins. Now, privacy coins used to be a hot topic. It used to be something everybody would talk about. It was a, it was a big deal. It was like the thing. You get what I'm saying? Um, Zcash, uh, it doesn't surprise me. He's always doing well. Cero, I don't know anything about it. XZC, never bought it. XMR, I used to have a lot of that. Uh, ENG, never had it. Dash, I used to have a lot of Dash. Zen, Pivx, BCN, and XVG. Don't buy Verge. Don't do it. Okay, trust me on that. But these are your top performers. I don't really dabble in privacy coins anymore. Uh, maybe I should, uh, but they just, I don't know. I, I feel like they serve a purpose, right? But to me, the, the, the getting too heavily into privacy coins is not really for me for like a investment or trading. It's more for its utility if I need a little privacy. This one, okay, now this one is the one where everybody, everybody needs to be paying attention, okay? Everyone is still looking for that 100x coin or that 50x coin or 10x coin or that low cap project that you can put money in that's going to blow up. That's great. Those are still going to exist. Those are still going to be there without a doubt. They're going to be there. But right now, it's DeFi. You need to familiarize yourself with DeFi. And it's the one thing that none of these platforms like Band, Len, Yuma, uh, uh, Synthetix, KNC, Maker, ZRX, Ren, Balance, or Comp, none of these guys pay for promotions. Zero promotions, zero marketing because they don't need retail money. As a matter of fact, they kind of avoid your money, okay? They don't need retail money. So these are the things you need to keep your eyes on. I know Band is up 283% in July. That seems like a lot, but Band has a lot of exciting things happening. I'm gonna give you a little teaser. There's a Band waves a little collaboration happening here okay you know waves one of my favorite projects out there they are partnered with the channel as well okay there's a collaboration there that's going to be very exciting that's going to be sh shared here real soon um so uh, is it too late to buy a band i don't know that's up to you for me personally i still think there's a lot of very interesting things about to happen for them that makes them worth buying more of on my end Lend, Yuma, I don't have any of that. Synthetics Network was really hot. Compound is down right now. Does it mean it's out of the game? No, does not mean it's out of the game. Keep your eyes out on these things. Trade responsibly. No, it, it's just it, try to try to try to learn DeFi. Okay, try to learn DeFi. Now, speaking of DeFi, I want to show you this. Let me get my fat head out the way here. This is the 30-day change of the total locked uh, DeFi uh, applications. Yearn, okay, which is actually a good place to, to start learning, uh, is up 2,600%. Then you got Curve, InstaDap, Ive. Um, then you have Uniswap and Maker. Uniswap is something I'm I'm actually heavily debating on doing a tutorial on because I'm a big fan of it. And mainly for me with Uniswap, it's because I'm heavy on Ample, okay? Being completely transparent. Um, Ive is a pretty good one as well, but Yearn is a good one because they try to make uh, yield farming simple. So if you use the Yearn platform, it does the whole thing for you, youth farming for you. Basically, you go in there, you do earn, and maybe I'll do a tutorial on that one because it's a lot more user-friendly. I actually think I'm going to do that one. But Yearn is definitely a good place to learn, okay? So it's a good beginner's place to learn, especially if you don't have the time to actually yield farm or if you just don't have the technical know-how to go in there and figure out the best places to get liquidity and loans 
it, it, it can be a bit overwhelming, even for myself. It's it, it's something I've actually found that very few people fully understand. All right, so speaking of the DeFi, the next up and like I promised in the beginning of videos, I'm gonna mention some up and comers that no one's really talking about. FTX chooses Solana and for Serum, a high speed non -custodial, custodial, the uh, decentralized derivatives exchange. All right, so Serum is going to help them with their DeFi uh, solutions. It's gonna be a DEX, it's basically like a Uniswap. So so FTX is gonna have their own FT, is gonna have their own Uniswap basically powered by Serum. Uh, they do have a token sell coming up. Let me see if I can find you the data. So on August 7th on Big Mat, on BitMax, and also on August 7th on FTX, uh, basically you earn tickets based off of how much of the token you own or how much your trading volume is. I'll try to leave a link to kind of give you something to do some research on to learn more about this. Um, but if you're looking for something to get in on ground level, again, there's no guarantees with any of this stuff. There's zero guarantees with any of this stuff, but uh, it's definitely worth a time to go in there and take a look into. So do a quick Google search on Serum, SRM, and you can find all the details. If you use FTX, you're in a good position. If you use BitMax, you're probably in a good position as well. Last thing we're going to cover is Staffy Protocol. Staffy Protocol is a decentralized protocol unlocking liquidity of staked assets. So basically, it's a it's a it's like a staking finance platform. That's what Staffy stands for, staking and finance put together. So it's the first decentralized protocol unlocking liquidity of staked assets. Now, something that they have recently done is they have added Polkadot, Cosmos, Tezos, Matic, and Kava, Kusama, and Harmony One. They have other ones coming out. This is also something else worth looking at. I am going to dabble in this. There's only one thing I don't like is that it's a one year. It takes one year to, to, to distribute all rewards. It's a patience game. It's a long-term play, but sometimes it's a safer play, okay? Uh, long-term things. So Staffy is definitely something worth looking into, especially if you're heavy in the staking. I like the fact that they have something going on with Polkadot because Polkadot already adds good rewards and getting the additional Staffy token on top of it is pretty dang cool again there's no guarantees with any of this stuff but this is all ground level so i'm trying to share it with you while i can all right so last one i'm going to mention this again uh, none of this is paid for by the way I'm, this is all i'm handing this to you is haka finance you heard of compound you heard of balancer you heard of curve you heard of yearn i guarantee you okay open your damn ears i guarantee to you when haka goes live and it fires up all cylinders and it's really running you're going to see Haka have one of those 1,000 to 4,000 percent gains. I guarantee, I'm actually going to rephrase that, rephrase that. I'm not going to say the word guarantee it because in the world of crypto, that can shoot you right in the ass. I'm just going to say I'm very confident in it. All right. Just do your research on it. Do your research. You can't really get into the early sell, but you can get into a position to where you can possibly farm it. All right. You can farm it. So it's definitely worth a look. But listen. That's all I've got for today. That is. Make sure you smash the subscribe buttons. I'm going to start doing more content like this where I find my, where I learn about early early bird stuff. I'm going to share it with you. If I got some good data to share with you, I'm going to share it with you. I'm going to kind of go back to my roots here. But listen, that's all I got for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace.